What I got here is the Revo Point Range 3D Scanner, a brand new 3D scanner for bigger objects. And we're gonna test it out in this video. The Revo Point Range is a new scanner for scanning larger objects than we could do with the previous models POP and POP2. This scanner has been sent to me for testing by Revo Point, but as every time, I'm doing an honest review to help you make educated decisions. How is the Revo Point range different from previous models than the POP2, for example? The major difference between the range and other models is the higher working distance, which is between 30 and 60 centimeters. And that also means we can capture more of a larger object in one image than before. And also the scanning speed will be faster as we can cover more area in less time. What comes in a box of the premium package is the scanner with a PC connection cable, a USB-C cable for using the scanner with a mobile phone, a table stand, a phone holder and a battery pack so you can run it completely autonomous with your smartphone. Finally there is a few scanning markers which are helpful if your scanning object is hard to track. This will help the scanner to figure the orientation of a part easier. And there's some black plastic sheet that can be used to cover parts of the object that you don't want to scan. Also in the premium package is this huge turntable, which you can use to scan larger objects. Even humans can step on it. It will carry up to 200 kilogram of load. At least it didn't break when I got scanned, as you will see later in the video. The whole package is still available on Kickstarter for a discount until March 17, 2023, but it will be most likely available in a Revo Point shop later if you're watching this video after the end of the Kickstarter campaign. The link is in the video description. What I wanted to start with was scanning a carved statue in the real world, so outside with natural light, and I tried to do it when it was cloudy. But I wasn't getting any scan finished because the nature of these scanners is that they use infrared light and infrared cameras for the depth information. And they get totally confused if any sunlight is shining on the object. It's simply too bright, it's too much light. I was able to scan part of the object that was in the shadow, but my verdict on using these kind of scanners in sunlight is it mostly doesn't work. You really want to have controlled light situations with artificial light and the best is to work indoors where you can do this any time of the day. Don't get me wrong, this is not a fault of this specific scanner. All scanners that use a similar technology have the same issues. So without further delay, let's have a look at the other scans that I did indoors. Starting with our good old friend, the lion statue. It's about 50 centimeter high, so a perfect example of something bigger than the usual things we scanned so far with the POP and the POP2. The process is very straightforward. On your computer, you start RevoScan, connect the scanner to a USB port, and then you can start scanning. The good thing about using a turntable is you don't have to move around the object, but the object is turning and you can keep the scanner steady at the right distance and the object always in frame. After scanning every single spot of the object, what I usually do is to export the point cloud to RevoScan and there I delete all the things that I don't want in the final result. I finally convert the object to a mesh, which is the closed surface 3D model, and I also make sure that all the holes are closed. From that point, I can export the scan into STL or OBJ format. And in this example, I decided to import it into my slicer program to create a 3D print at a slightly smaller scale. So it fits into my printer. And after a few hours, I had a pretty nice replica of the lion statue. What do you think about this? From a quality perspective, I really cannot complain. The result looks clean. However, as with every camera-based scanning process, there is limitations to what you can expect. So for example, having equal lighting with soft boxes will give you much better color capturing and make it also easier to scan cavities. The precision is good enough for capturing objects to post-process them for 3D printing and 3D modeling. However, if you want to get CAD quality for manufacturing, I can only recommend this as a first step to do a clean reverse engineering afterwards. 
The next object I scanned is this slightly smaller deer figure. And the challenges are that it is very reflective. So trying to scan this without scanning spray or chalk spray is not possible as the infrared light is completely deflected by the surface and so it's invisible to the scanner. This is also true for glass objects and anything that has a shiny surface. To overcome these problems, there's multiple solutions. In this case, I'm using AE sub scanning spray, which gives the object a gray surface and makes it non-reflective. After applying the spray, you can see there is no reflections anymore and it's ready to get scanned. This time, the scanner had no problems catching the surface detail and after finishing the scan and post-processing it for 3D printing, I was able to print a pretty accurate replica in just a few hours. I would say this looks quite decent. From all the tests that I've done, I would also say that the size of objects, so roughly 15 centimeter, is the smallest that you should use the scanner for. If you want to go much smaller and still capture higher detail, I would recommend going for the Revopoint Pop 2 or the Revopoint Mini Scanner. And now it was time to do a full body scan of myself. But to do this, you will need a second person doing the actual scan of your body using the smartphone. My wife was assisting for the first time ever in a video, so I'm very very thankful for that. We did multiple tries and were kind of successful, however we always reached the smartphone's memory limit at some point. Exactly after 2000 scanned images my Android phone ran out of memory. And interesting enough the iPhone 13 Pro which has the same amount of memory which is 4GB same as the Pixel 6a, the iPhone was scanning a few hundred images more. So we could have reached my feet. However that iPhone scan got lost in space so all I got is the scan from the Android phone. Post Processing it in Revo Studio, I decided to just take the upper body section from the chest on and print a replica of that. And here's how it came out of the printer. So this is me 3D scanned and preserved for eternity, like the Romans did it. What's the final verdict of my test and who is this scanner for? I'd say if you go for this model, you get a really decent 3D scanner for larger objects and with larger objects, I mean anything above 15 centimeters of size. However, you have to be aware that scanning really large things, for example, full body scans, might be better done using the scanner connected to a computer with a decent amount of memory. So anything above 8 GB of RAM will do. If you have a smartphone with significantly more memory than mine, so 6 GB or more, you might get away using the scanner just with a smartphone for larger things, but you should be aware that you might run into the memory limits of your device at some point. Pricing of the range scanner is also noticeably higher than the previous model, so you should really know that you're more into scanning bigger things. For my part, I can say that I'm already pretty well suited with the the POP2, it's really dependent on your use cases. I can imagine the best use case for this specific model might be product scans for web shops or full body scans to present apparel in 3D on a website or web shop. Car body part scans might be another use case to do repairs or reverse engineering. One thing again, I can recommend in any case to get yourself some scanning spray. Links are in the description of this video because a lot of things have shiny reflective surfaces. There's also another version of the AE sub spray that doesn't make everything just white, but it makes things just less reflective while retaining the color information. So don't forget, the Kickstarter of the Rain Scanner runs until March 17th, 2023. And if you like this video, please smash the like button. It helps to push this video to more people and helps me to make more videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.